trying to analyze any sort of big data sets, Excel just is not going to cut it anymore. Instead, after you pick up the basics of the computer programming language Python, I highly recommend that people learn Pandas, which is a Python library or kind of like program that allows you to work with data frames, which are basically tables and they can be really, really big and you can do really complex analysis of them. And so here are some of my favorite resources, so videos and cheat sheets and things like this for learning pandas and using it. So I am in no means an expert, um, but these have been really helpful for me as I have been learning pandas um, or refreshing my learning and using it to analyze some data. And this is what I found helpful. Pandas is built upon the programming language Python. So if you're not familiar with Python, I highly recommend that you familiarize yourself with it. If possible, take an actual course in Python. So I took a course on Python in undergraduate, basically an intro course, and it really helped set the stage, lay the foundation for doing the later work that I wanted to do in things like Pandas so that I'm able to analyze my own data sets. So I am in no way a computer scientist or a data, um, data scientist, but I am learning enough Pandas and that sort of thing to be able to do some custom analysis of my data, which is really, really helpful, and it can also be fun. There's a lot of great content out there. And so I have a sort of like cheat sheet and documents with some of my favorite resources and tips and things like this. Um, I, what I've tried to do in today's video is kind of just weed through what things I found the most helpful, especially when it comes to YouTube playlists and channels and videos. There's a lot of content out there and a lot of it is oriented more towards people that want to do things like develop apps and games and websites. But when it comes to the sort of data analysis that you're going to be doing in basic science, when you're not dealing in when you're not dealing with huge data, like huge, huge, massive amounts of big data, but you're kind of just doing things like analyzing um, sequencing data, that sort of thing, basic data sets that Excel just doesn't do the trick, but you don't need something super duper intense, then this is kind of my what I'm trying to aim for with the types of videos and resources that I'm going to show you. But of course, you can then build upon those two other things. But all of the, what we're going to be talking about, all of this Panda stuff is built on Python. And so Python is really the place to start. Joe James has a really great playlist on Python programming, programming fundamentals. You want to focus on making sure you're familiar with things like variables, with lists, with dictionaries, for loops. Um, and yeah, that sort of thing is also they're nicely broken up by topic. Some of the really helpful ones are like lambda functions and list comprehensions, which are things that I didn't really learn much about in my intro Python course, but that come in really, really handy when you want to do um, manipulations of lists and things like this and applying functions to your data sets, which will make a lot more sense once you're familiar with pandas. Um, but the fundamentals of it comes from Python. And so I'll post a link to all of these playlists and stuff that I'm pointing you to, but this is a really helpful one. So thank you, Joe James. Corey Schaefer also has some nice videos on common Python mistakes and how to fix them and tips for writing better code. But today I want to focus on pandas. And so pandas, remember, this is where we're going to be able to work with these data frames, which are basically like these big these big data tables that you can do really comp or they don't have to be big, they can be small, they can be whatever size you want, and you could do all sorts of really cool computation and comparisons and analysis and combinations and all of this various things with the data in these tables or these data frames. And so pandas, thankfully, they have really nice documentation, including a nice cheat sheet. And if you're confused about anything specific part of pandas. They have a great user guide where you can look up various functions and operations, how to do things, as well as a 10 minutes to pandas kind of like getting started guide. If you're using Jupyter Lab, you can actually access this help information directly from, um, from a Jupyter notebook if you have pandas, in, um, the pandas library imported. And so whenever you're using pandas, you actually have to start by importing the library. Um, so typically it's convention to import pandas as PD. 
And this way you can call on specific pandas functions using the notation pd dot something. And if you go to help, you can then find the pandas reference as well as reference guides to NumPy, which panda is built on, which NumPy is built on Python, but pandas is built on NumPy, which allows you to work with, do um, calculations with numbers and things like this. And then pandas allows you to work with the data frames. And so you can find the references to all of them under help once you've imported those modules. And if you're confused about any specific thing, what you can do in a Jupyter Notebook is if you go to um, do shift tab, it'll bring up the, the doc string. So it'll tell you more about more about whatever it is that you're confused about, whether this is some sort of program, whether this is an actual function and things like this. So you can see these various things like that. And that's really helpful. If you want to know more about Jupyter Lab and Jupyter Notebooks, I have a short video on this, but I highly recommend actually going to the pros where I learned this all from. And so one of my favorite resources is Project Data Science. They have a video on Jupyter Notebook tutorials, as well as a video on like setting up your Python data science environment. So downloading downloading Jupyter Lab and Jupyter Notebook and Python and all of these various things that you need in order to get to the fun data analysis part. Keith Galley also has a nice video on five Jupyter Notebook tips and tricks so that you make the most of it. And so now let's get into actually working with pandas. So Project Data Science, the ones that have that Jupyter Notebook tutorial and stuff, they also have a nice pandas video as well as NumPy, which again is kind of working with more lists of data, kind of like arrays of numbers rather than actual data frames. Um, but Pandas is built on NumPy, and you can learn more about both of those. They have these 80-20 videos, where basically it's supposed to have the 20% of the things that you need to know in order to get 80% out of these programs. So really helpful on focusing on the things that you should be focusing on. When it comes to really learning Pandas in depth, I recommend Corey Schaefer's playlist on Pandas, to, uh, Pandas tutorials. It really goes step-by-step step into various things that you need to know when you're using Pandas. Some of the key things that you're gonna wanna focus on are indexes. So how do you identify and locate and call upon various rows and columns and things like this? How do you filter your data? So say, I only want the, I only want the data that corresponds to adults in this data set, not kids. Or I only want the data that is bigger than 50 and less than 100, things like this. How can you modify the tables, change values, merge tables, um, add rows and columns? How can you group by? Group by is a really big thing in pandas. So you can say, OK, if I have some of these cells that were treated with the drug and some that weren't treated with the drug, if I group them by whether or not they were treated by the drug and then do some comparison, how do they compare? And so by grouping the data together, you're able to do that sort of comparison. And so grouping and aggregating is really important in pandas. And this is something that you're going to want to check out. It can also, when you're trying to analyze data, data analysis can be fun, but it can also be really frustrating if you have things like missing data and like not a number, NANDs and things like this. So this video will help you kind of figure out how to make sense of that. If you're dealing with more complex things, if you have dates and times and that sort of thing, there's a lot more content that you can have here. And then there's also, so Excel isn't great for doing data analysis, but a lot of times the data you get is in like an Excel format and Pandas can actually read in those Excel files as well as things like comma, um, separated values or CSV files, um, tab separated values, all that stuff. And so this will help you kind of learn how to import the data. And so I've watched a lot of these videos many, many times because um, you just, it's some Python and pandas and all of this stuff, it just takes practice. And so really the best way to learn is by practicing on your own data. Um, and they also, in a lot of these videos, they have links to the data, so you, the um, notebooks and things so you can follow along with them. But really, you just keep going back and back and back and trying to um, refresh your stuff, especially when you're a lab scientist mostly and you're doing a lot of experiments. And so you're focused on experimenting for months and months and then you have a bunch of data. And so now you have to get into data analysis mode and then you have to get back into experiment mode and then data analysis mode. And so it was kind of 
um, you kind of have to, to keep refresh your memory. And these videos are really nice for doing that, especially since they're broken up like this. So I would say this is probably one of my favorite video series for learning pandas. Um, another one that I stumbled across is this data talks. They have this an opinionated guide to pandas. And so this is really great in that um, he basically focuses on the core, kind of like the 80-20 videos in that he focuses on the core things that he uses all the time and that he finds the most helpful. There's a lot of places in pandas and in Python where there's many, many ways that you could do the same thing. And some of them are going to be more efficient and some of them are going to be easier and some of them are going to be more elegant. I have to say that a lot of times I probably, um, I get really proud of myself because I figure out a way to do something, but it's probably a very, very inefficient way to do something and a very, very unelegant way to do something. Um, but the, um, this is basically telling you how he likes to do things. And so what kinds of, what sides of functions he likes to use, things like this, how he handles data. What I find really helpful is it's like stack and stack melt pivots, um, this sort of thing, as well as the group by and the merge. Basically what can happen is that if you're combining data sets or if you're grouping data sets by a various value, you can end up with these things called multi-indexes where you have basically these complex data formats that can be hard to work with. And so he kind of shows you how you can flatten them with stack and unstack and all this sort of thing in order to more easily work with them. Um, so I like this opinionated guide to Panda series. Um, if you want to kind of go through some a, a project, um, see how a scientist would go through an actual project, analyze data, things like this, as well as you can play along with the code. Keith Galley has a nice video on this, a complete pa Python pandas data science tutorial, which, which I found helpful when you kind of, once you've learned the basics a little and you kind of want to go through an actual example, this is really helpful. A lot of times at the end of your pandas project or in the middle, what you want to do is you're going to want to actually visualize the data in a form other than a table, something like a graph. And so basically with you, when you're using pandas, you can do stuff that basically has some built-in functionality for plotting and things that are built upon matplotlib. But if you want to make plotting easier and more pretty, um, what I recommend is using Seaborn. And so Derek Bennis has this nice Seaborn tutorial and I recommend it and I will post a link to this, but it's very helpful for creating plots. And Corey Schaefer also has a nice one on that plot lib. Um, but there's a lot of really nice plots that you can do in um, from your Jupyter, from your pandas files to using Seaborn in order to make all sorts of different types of plots. And so Seaborn is really great for this. When there is some, so these videos are great, but they can't go over everything. And there's always going to be specific times when you get lost and you don't know what to do. Um, and this this is true for the actual data scientists too. There's going to be a point where they're stuck in some sort of coding step. And so in some of these videos, you find them saying like, oh, let me just go Google this. So Google is really, really helpful when you have a specific thing that you're trying to answer. So if you type in, how do I say read the next line of a Python um, in Python after I open a file? Well, then it'll take you often to Stack Overflow where people will have answers to these sorts of questions with actual code. And so you, you'll have to change the change the names and things like this, but you can then use the basis, use this code as the basis for making your own code. And so really, really helpful. And you'll often find me these days with bunch of bunch of tabs open with lots of Google tabs and Stack Overflow tabs and things like this. I also have done a short video in the past on pandas tips for kind of viewing your data, things like describe and dot describe and dot info. Um, but again, I really recommend those more pro ones better more. Um, but and I will post a link to that as well as I will update. Um, my Python cheat sheet and things like this. And happy learning. So remember, start with Python. Once you've mastered Python, get into pandas. Know that practice makes perfect or not doesn't make perfect, but it makes things easier. And so coding isn't quite like riding a bike, but it does get easier each time you return to it. And once you have the basics down, which can get really frustrating just kind of learning it, but once you've learned it, you can do some really sort of cool analysis of that cool data that you're getting in the lab, say, or of all sorts of different things. So that's one of the great things about these skills is that they're going to be 
applicable to a wide variety of contexts. And so, yeah, so even if you're a wet lab scientist like me, you really like working at the bench, getting your hands dirty, at the end of the day, you might end up with a lot of data that then you want to be able to analyze and use it, learning these computer programming languages and learning pandas is going to allow you to analyze that data and then learning Seaborn that's gonna allow you to make some pretty graphs and stuff of it. So hope that you find these helpful as well and happy learning.